Hi, my name is Felix Kremer and now I'm going to talk about how to use ESDL.jl to do large-scale computations. First, we need to load the relevant packages. And for that, we activate the environment that we're going to use. Then we're um, using the ESDL package to handle the data cube. We're using the statistics standard library to get um, access to statistical functions like the mean. Um, we're using plots and ESDL plots for plotting. We're using dates to handle um, date objects and we're using YAX arrays as the back end of ESDL. And we're using weighted online stats to um, derive uh, online statistics from our data. So what is the what are the steps to use ESDL and why are we using it? First, we want to use data that is larger than RAM. We're going to use disk arrays in the background to load only the data that is really needed and to, if you don't need the data, only load a small wrapper of metadata around the data. Um, we're going to use chunks of the data so that you're going to load um, as much of the data you actually want to look at um, at the same time. We can use NetCDF, SAR, or GDAL to load different um, data formats. And we can load the data either locally or from the cloud using, using the SAR file. Um, here we're um, loading a small example data cube um, that is stored locally. Um, if we um, open such a data cube, we see the type of the data, then we see the different uh, names of the axes. In this case, I have a longitude, a latitude, a time, and a variable axis. And we see the number of elements and the ranges of the, these elements. And the variable axis is a categorical axis with four elements. And um, there we see the names of these different categories. And we also see the total size that, that is basically the maximal size that this data set could have. Um, if we apply subsets, we can either use the subset cube function to get, for example, one of these variables. Um, so we get a data cube that has not no variable access anymore but only a longitude, latitude, and time axis. And these subsets happen lazily, so you only say, okay, I want to use this part of the data, and then um, you just change the metadata wrapper, but you're not changing any of the data on the disk. You could also um, use the da data as a, in square brackets to access this as a normal array. And um, here we find all um, data that is not missing. So where actual values are in there to, to plot this. And here we have an example Sentinel-1 time series. And um, now we can also make computations on every element of the cube. And these elements are also done lazily. So they are just registered and the computations are done if I'm doing other computations or if I um, want to save the data on disk again. And here we are applying the um, conversion of the linear data to DB values. And here we use this map function. And with this do, we say, OK, we have this x. This is inside our function body. We can apply this on x. And then um, we write it back into a into the output cube. And we get a cube back that is the same size as the input cube. And here we see if we plot the data that we plotted before, but this time on the DB values, we see that the y-axis changed. And now we can also um, make computations along these named axes. So we know that we have this longitude and latitude axis, and we also had a time axis. And here we apply a function that we defined 
our own and we can use the whole Julia ecosystem to define these functions um, to apply this on the time axis. And here we have this pix p range is the output of our function, this pix is the input, and then we can have other input um, parameters. And we use this map cube function to apply the function we defined over here. And we apply it on this db zoom cube. This dot zero five is the threshold value does it, that is also given into the inner function. And then we also define the input dimensions. Here we apply it on the time axis. And we also can define output dimensions. In this case, we just define that there's no output dimension. And therefore, we are um, converting this db zoom cube, which has a had a longitude, latitude, and time axis into a um, cube that only has a longitude and latitude axis. And then we can also plot this and see um, the output of this. And then we can also apply moving window computations. In this case, we're just applying uh, averaging um, on the moving window. So we just say, okay, the output is the average of the input. And then um, we can define a wrapper function. Here we say, okay, the input dimensions are a moving window along the latitude with one step in front and one step after the um, pixel that we're actually looking at. And the same in longitude. And this means we're just applying a three by three moving window around the um, every pixel. But we could also change this to zero and um, this to larger numbers so that we have a non-symmetrical moving windows. And here we also have a output dimension that is empty. So um, we get the same values back and here we you can apply now this moving mean function on the percentile range cube we um, computed earlier. And we get a cube of the same size. And we see that we get a smoothed image of the um, percentile range. Um, now, after we've done our analysis, we can save our cube to disk by using the save cube function we um, tell the function which cube to save, where to save it. Then we can define the backend, either TSAR or NetCDF files, if you want to use it with other software like QGIS. And um, here we just say, okay, we want to overwrite whatever is in this path. And um, we could also load reference polygons. Here we are using the official a system data cube, which is um, hosted by the Max Planck Institute of Biogeochemistry and um, which holds a lot of um, uh, geodata in a, a resolution of 0 0.5 degrees. And here we can load a shape file with um, country information and we want to only apply this on, the, on Europe to get all country information in Europe. And um, we get a um, cube that has the size of um, also the C region Europe and um, which has labels for every country. And um, so the values are, are these numbers and then they are decoded into the country name um, later on. And if we want to um, apply computations on the data cube, we can also use the table interface. So we can use the data either as an array or as a data frame. And we can combine multiple cubes in one table. In this case, we're applying the um, this cube table function. We say, okay, we want to use the air temperature on Europe on the variable um, minimal air temperature. And um, we want the country information from this country cube we loaded earlier. And we also want to include the axis longitude, latitude, and time. And we're doing that to fit um, 
online statistics. So statistics that are just moving once through the whole data. So here we can cube fit the table. So we're using this table we defined earlier here. And then we um, can apply a weighted mean. And in this case, we are weighting the averaging by the latitude to um, take care of the fact that the areas are getting smaller in higher latitudes. And then we can also group this by the country name and by the months. And um, then we need to pol polish this a little bit and rename the axis. Um, if you find if you don't find your um, the packages you need in the Julia ecosystem, you can also use a Python or R packages, and you can use PyCall to access the Python ecosystem and R call for the R packages. And in this example, we're just using PyCall to apply a Gaussian smoothing from the SkyPy ecosystem on our data. So we can load the um, SkyPy and the image um, package by pi import. And then we can use this in our inner function to do the computations. And here we're just um, doing it exemplarily on the GPP values for Jena. And here we can also we use the um, use this to subset the data on the latitude and longitude of Jena and the time frame of 2010 to 2011 and um, only on one of the var variables. And then um, we can apply the function we defined earlier on this data set uh, with an input of time and an output of time. And uh, then we get a smoothed uh, variant of the GPP over the year 2010. And, um, but we could also do this um, on the whole cube of Europe um, and it's uh, taking care of the parallelization in the background. And um, if we want to use the analysis on multiple cores, or multiple nodes, we can either use threads on a single computer or we can use the distributed standard library on multiple computers, but it also works with um, slum clusters and the slum cluster manager. Um, here we're just loading the distributed standard library. Um, we add some processes so that we can parallelize the computations. Then we have to load the packages we want to use everywhere. So here we just first activate the um, environment we're using and then we're um, loading the ESDL and the statistics package and the function we want to apply on all added processes. And then we can apply the map cube function as before that by defining the function we want to use, defining the cube we want to apply it on but now it's taking all of the resources we added beforehand um, to do the computation in parallel. This is how you um, use the ESDL package to um, do large scale computations on data that are larger than RAM and um, so that you don't have to take care of the parallelization yourself, but that um, all of this loading and distributing is taken care of in the background. Thank <laughs> you.